We have all heard about the seven wonders of the world, but the mention of the Taj Mahal places it in a unique category as it is considered a symbol of love and regarded as the world's most expensive heritage. This beautiful building, constructed 400 years ago, was once the largest and most magnificent building of its time. To build this magnificent structure, 20,000 laborers toiled day and night, not for just one or two years, but for a total of 22 years. If we estimate the value of the Taj Mahal from that era, it would be worth more than $1 billion, as the Mughal architects infused their craftsmanship with many unique features, which are still admired by today's top engineers. The total area of the Taj Mahal encompasses 42 acres, which includes a mosque built in the style of the Jama Masjid in Delhi, made of red marble. In addition to this, there are four gardens surrounding the Taj Mahal, which are extensive gardens with a quadrilateral layout, reminiscent of the Shalimar Gardens in Lahore. The Taj Mahal has a total of three gates, two of which are small gates and one large gate. This large gate is used for entry and exit. Beautiful Quranic verses are beautifully inscribed on this gate. The building is designed in such a way that when viewed from behind the main gate, it appears quite large. However, as you approach the main gate, the building gradually seems to shrink, creating a dizzying effect. This design is unique and still unparalleled today. The minarets of this building are not perfectly vertical. Instead, they lean slightly outward. The reason for this is to ensure that in the event of an earthquake, if the minarets fall, they will fall away from the Taj Mahal, thus protecting it from destruction. The design of the Taj Mahal still leaves one in awe, especially considering that 400 years ago, there was no concept of concrete or steel design in construction work. So how was such a magnificent mausoleum and its towering dome, which is 40 meters high, built? The mention of the Taj Mahal is incomplete without the story of Shah Jahan and Mumtaz Mahal. This matter began in 1607, when the Mughal Empire ruled Hindustan. When the Mughal Emperor's youngest son, Shah Jahan, turned 17, the Emperor arranged his marriage with the daughter of his lawyer, named Anjuman Bano Begum, who is now known as Mumtaz Mahal. Thus began the tale of this great love, although at that time, no one knew that this love story would endure through the ages. For the next ten years, the prince fought in several battles and achieved many victories. As a result, the emperor was pleased and honored him with the title of Shah Jahan, meaning King of the World. Shah Jahan had more than one wife, but he spent most of his time with Mumtaz Mahal. In 1628, Shah Jahan ascended the throne of the Mughal Empire, which was at its zenith at that time. However, only a year after taking the throne, he had to confront enemies again, and this war lasted two years. Shah Jahan achieved great success in this battle, but he received the tragic news that Mumtaz Mahal, who was giving birth to their fourteenth child, had passed away during childbirth. This news struck Shah Jahan like a fire, consuming his world, and he did not eat anything for the next eight days due to his grief. For the next two years, he did not listen to any music. Before Mumtaz Mahal passed away, her last wish was that her tomb be built in a magnificent mausoleum. To fulfill this task, Shah Jahan decided to spend all his royal wealth on this endeavor. Thus, six months after Mumtaz Mahal's death, in 1632, the construction of the Taj Mahal began. More than 20,000 laborers and artisans were gathered from across the empire, and under Shah Jahan's orders, they were sent to Agra. Mumtaz Mahal's grave was located beside the Yamuna River, which made it quite challenging to build such a grand structure on that site, as the land near the river is very soft. If construction was done under these conditions, the flow of water could damage the foundations of the Taj Mahal. To address this issue, Mughal engineers began digging several wells underground in this area and filled these wells with stones and gravel. After that, large stone columns were erected above them. A significant number of laborers and elephants were used to complete all of this work. 
Thus, these engineers' trick worked, and now a strong foundation was prepared that stood like steel on the soft ground. Now there was a grand building design that had never been seen before, a design that broke all previous records. Shah Jahan was a king who had a great passion for construction and was also an engineer himself. His era is considered the most significant in terms of architecture, and the architectural masterpieces constructed during his reign still exist today, such as the Shalimar Gardens in Lahore, Jahangir's tomb, Asif Jahan's tomb, the Wazir Khan Mosque, the Shahi Fort, and the Jama Masjid in Agra, as well as the Red Fort and Jama Masjid in Delhi. The model for the Taj Mahal was inspired by the tombs of his ancestors. He took the idea of the minarets from his father's tomb, the structure from his grandfather's tomb, and the dome from his uncle's tomb. By combining these ideas, the design of the Taj Mahal was created, which is a magnificent and splendid design. The chief architect of the Taj Mahal was Ustad Ahmad Lahori. The structure of this building was built using hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of precious stones. This was not an easy task, and a significant amount of money was spent on it, leading to the royal treasury being emptied rapidly with each passing day. However, Shah Jahan was not concerned about anything in love. He just wanted to complete this task at any cost. It is said that so many people were engaged in the construction of the Taj Mahal that food and drink ran out in the surrounding areas because Shah Jahan had summoned laborers from all nearby regions to meet the demand for 20,000 workers. Several years later, when the structure of this building was completed, it was adorned with marble and precious stones. This marble had to be brought from 400 kilometers away in Rajasthan because the Makrana marble from there is still considered the finest in the world. Shah Jahan booked all the Makrana marble for the Taj Mahal, meaning that no one else was allowed to purchase it until the demand for the Taj Mahal was fulfilled. Additionally, jasper stone was brought from Punjab, jade and crystal stones were sourced from China, turquoise stones from Tibet, sapphires from Sri Lanka, and carnelians from Saudi Arabia. In this way, the materials used inside the Taj Mahal were sourced from various parts of the world. The beautiful dome of the Taj Mahal is so large that one can only truly appreciate its size by seeing it in person. Nowadays, domes of this kind can easily be constructed using steel design, but 400 years ago, the construction of a 40-meter-high dome was a remarkable feat of engineering. During that time, engineers only had stone as their material to work with, and the craftsmanship required to build this dome is still praised by today's engineers. The Taj Mahal's finishing is adorned with pietra dura, a technique that involves inlaying precious stones into marble. Pietra Dura craftsmanship involves expertly carving valuable stones into specific shapes and then affixing them to the marble surface using a special glue. The glue used in the Taj Mahal is not an ordinary adhesive. It is made from lemon juice and marble powder. This same technique is still used today for the renovation of the Taj Mahal. The construction of the Taj Mahal took 22 years and was completed in 1654. In this way, Shah Jahan succeeded in building the world's most beautiful mausoleum in the name of his love for his wife. One of the special features of the Taj Mahal is that it changes colors four times a day. Before sunrise, it has a completely black shade. After sunrise, it takes on yellow and pink hues. During the afternoon, the beauty of the Taj Mahal appears in a completely new light, and at sunset, the entire building looks golden. The construction of the Taj Mahal is famous for the story that when it was completed, Shah Jahan had all the workers' hands chopped off. This is said to be because he did not want any similar masterpiece to be built in the future. However, this incident is not recorded in history. According to the renowned historian Raj Kishore, Shah Jahan promised the artisans that they would not have to work again after completing the Taj Mahal and promised them lifelong wages. 
In other words, this later narrative that Shah Jahan had the workers' hands chopped off was created to prevent them from working on other projects. Thus, while this was the most expensive project, it brought the Mughal Empire to the brink of destruction. Four years later, in 1658, Shah Jahan's own son, Aurangzeb Alamgir, usurped the throne from him and revolted against his father. As a result, Shah Jahan, who had ruled for 30 years, was imprisoned in Agra Fort, turning him into a captive. However, there was a facility in his prison where he could see the Taj Mahal from the window of the room where he was confined. After the construction of the Taj Mahal, Shah Jahan expressed a desire to build a black Taj Mahal in opposition to the existing one. The foundations for this project still exist there, but due to his son's rebellion, he could not complete it. After spending eight years in captivity, he passed away at the age of 74, and his tomb is located alongside that of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. This is the story of a symbol of love. I hope you gained a lot of information from today's video. Please let me know in the comments how you found today's video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.